All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and this is this channel is all about DIY motion sims. So how to build it, how to power it, kind of motors to use, all this different stuff. How, how the electronics um, work, and how to get it up and running. This is episode seven, and what we're gonna try to do today is a few different things. First of all, I just want you to take a look. I got the, the bottom frame is ready to go. Primed it, put a little bit of filler in on some of the seams I needed, and it's been drying for a week. So, see what we gotta do on this. So what I'm hoping to do is get these motors mounted on the mid frame down here and uh, yeah, just kind of get these things mounted. That way when we run our bar from the motor to the top frame, the seat frame, you know, we're going to have good movement. So we're going to have to take a look at it mounting these up today. But before we do that, what I need to do is get the U-joint mounted and make some type of bracket for the top frame to, to rest on these two pieces of steel. I want it to be adjustable, so I have some angle iron. Basically, I think I'm gonna put the angle iron in here um, and then drill a bunch of holes on the bottom. That way I can move, um, if I put an extra butt kicker or get a heavier wheel or, or whatever. So it's gonna be easier to balance the top frame. Well, let's take a look at getting this U-joint set two 15 and a half inch pieces. So I made this uh, four and a half by four and a half inch with the uh, 3 16 steel. I'm gonna weld it on here, but first, so we're gonna try to do some adjustability to the, the top frame. So basically the top frame is gonna bolt on these things. And I'm gonna put a few more, I'm gonna figure out how to do it so I can adjust the top frame if I need to. I don't think I need to right now, but so I'm gonna set it where the center of uh, balance is for it right now. But if I need to adjust it, I'm just gonna have four bolts holding this whole thing on. These are plenty strong enough, but if we need to, we can beef it up. Put some gussets or something. All right, so I'm gonna weld this uh, four and a half inch plate in the center of these two rails. And then the whole frame is gonna sit on top of these ends. And that way I should be able to adjust it. Now that we got the U-joint sitting on here, and I got these two pieces, I just want the top frame to rest on top of them. Just rest on top. That way they're supporting all the load and it's very, you know, it's just a couple inches from the center of um, the U-joint. Let's put the top frame in place. I did go ahead and get a preliminary uh, center of balance on here. I put the V3 pedals up here. I put the CSL Elite wheel here. I put the seat on, I sat in it, and um, yeah, I marked it out for the center of balance. Now I'm gonna go over that again, probably in the next video, but right now, I just kinda of wanna get this stuff going. Right down in here, this, this, this actual bolt hole, that's where the center of uh, balance seems to be on this thing. When I'm sitting in it, that's where it seems to be. So what I'm gonna do is mark that, uh, get that angle iron. I'm gonna clean it up a bit and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna weld right to the, the top frame and drill a bunch of holes here so that we can slide the top frame forward or backwards depending if I need to. It'll give me more adjustability than the other, uh, the bigger rig. On those, that rig, I didn't, I had to actually add extra bars in the middle um, when I put the V3 pedals on because it really threw it out of balance because I was coming from those Logitech G25s which are plastic don't weigh anything 
And uh, once I got the CSL on there and the V3s, it was just way too front heavy. Okay, so if you see down here, originally the U-joint was way back here on those two. And then after adding the CSL Elite and the V3 pedals especially, I had to add an extra bar, like just in the middle of the rig. So I don't want it to be that way on this new frame. I want uh, just to be able to adjust it if I need to without a bunch of hassle. So let's get rid of this and move this. So I'm just gonna take a couple measurements to cut this angle iron. And I want it to be sitting flat on the bottom, but give me a pretty good range of maybe, I don't know, what do you say? I could go all the way back here, 10 inches. It would weld up against here. I just need to cut this and then drill holes every inch. That would give me a lot of range of movement um, to be attaching this to those two bottom rails on the mid frame. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with 10 right here. Up one of these three eighths by two inch bolts. Um, obviously we're gonna have to drill a few more. So I'm sure there's something better to do than watch me drill holes. All right, so the last thing. Okay, we got four bolts in. I'm gonna clean these up and tack weld them on. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the distances and put, uh, I think one, two, three more holes in. That way I get a little bit of adjustability. Well, now that my most favorite part drilling is done and it's just started raining, I got to get some tag welds on this quick. All right, so just a few more tack welds on the bottom side this time. All right, guys, so to uh, get the front motors mounted, we got to take into consideration how, how, how much clearance we have. So obviously we got plenty of clearance like this, but if we turn to the right really heavy and we are uh, braking really hard, or if we turn to the left really heavily and we're braking real hard, this is the maximum it could possibly be. So you wanna go through your frame and just see what, what it's doing. So obviously acceleration, you have tons of room. Uh, this is about midpoint and then full brake would be somewhere around here. It's not gonna be hitting, but just so you know, you got to try to build in something for that. So I'm gonna put it all the way over here. This is full down, full brake, and uh, turning, or at least the frame uh, down on the right hand side. So I've gotta establish clearance for the motor. So what I'm thinking of doing is having the motors kind of uh, have an angle to them, kind of like my old rig, but this is going to be just reversed. I put the lever arm on here, and that way I got clearance. If I do them straight, I'm going to have all sorts of problems. I'm going to either be running into the motor or potentially chopping off and not having enough clearance here for the potentiometer. I did build this thing so I don't have an issue with that. But if I did do a turn hard to the right, this, this angle is just going to have trouble um, with, the, uh, with the tie rod ends going that way. So the only way really to solve this problem that I've, that I've come up with is to angle the motor something like this. So I'll put the motor arm on real quick. Okay, you want to mock your stuff up 
So if we're going into full braking, that'd be down here. Full acceleration on this side and the other side, something like that. You just want to run this thing through in your head to see where you, what kind of clearances you have and where um, the problems might lie in your motor. Okay, so I'm going to go like this and I'm going to tilt it in the other direction just to see, you know, do I have clearance right here? Do I have clearance right here? If I had the motors straight in line, I would run into clearance problems. So you just want to work this stuff over by yourself, kind of just figure it out. And, you know, just, you don't need to do anything permanent yet. All right, so what I have here is just the way I'm going to try to uh, mock it up. Now, I have this, uh, the, the piece of weldable steel, I think it's 16 gauge. And I've done, I've drawn, I've been over this a few times and I, I just wanted to make a sort of a template on how to mount the motor. I did do a, uh, a clear uh, template for the mounting of the motor. I got one, two, three holes, plus the, the, the hole that goes around the outside. I made it out of aluminum, so there's n absolutely no strength here. But that just kind of gives me a rough gauge as to how much to, uh, to, that I need to either cut off or whatever. All right, so this is probably not going to make a whole lot of sense yet, but I got this one piece cut. This is part of the mid frame. This piece here is going to fold up to mount the motor with the hole. And then I'm cutting along here, here, and here, and this piece is going to fold and cover the front right in here. It's kind of going to turn out to be kind of like, kind of like that. So... Okay, so the first bend is done. Now, I don't have a, a metal brake, so I had to heat it up, pound on it uh, in a vise to get the angle pretty close. Now, let's uh, set the motor here. I almost got one of the motor mounts on. I've got it tack welded on. I just wanted to show you this really cool thing. It's a little bit expensive. It was like 18 bucks. It's rounded. Uh, the the abrasive wraps all the way around it, so it's pretty pretty cool. I'll just put it on here. All right, you can see I got these; they're cooled down pretty good. I mean, it's a flux core, so let's see how this thing works. All right, so let's take a look at this motor mount. Yeah, this is the first time I've tried it. And I mean, that, that's actually pretty smooth to the touch. A little bit of more work, a little bit better lighting. I think that'd be cool. All right, so let's see if this hard work is paid off. She's on there, she's sturdy. Okay, you can see the angle. Now, one of the motors is going to be reversed like this, where the long part of the shaft is going to be sticking inwards. So when we put the lever on, we're going to have to add an extra nut right here just to keep it a little bit more clearance. So on this one, on this one, we're going to want a bolt right in here. And we're still going to put a bolt on this side. As wild as this looks, this actually supposed to be two motors so this would be a full acceleration full brake uh, turning turning of the acceleration so you're going to be right around the middle so this is middle ride and this bar is I mean I have it on with tape right here so we're basically just trying to see if we come in contact with any uh, you know if we have any clearance issues so right now you know, it doesn't look like we do. 
That's because I canted these motors. Well, this one, and now I have to build the other one tomorrow. Um, this one's canted out. So it'll still work just fine. Up, down, full, left, right. And once we get the, the other motor mounted up, um, we'll work on you know, getting these to the right length so it rides right. Right now the lever arms are five inches center to center. On the other rig, they're four inches center to center. So just pushing it a little bit more. And it'll fit on just like this, except for going the opposite direction. I did, did mark out this inch and a quarter tubing. I'm gonna cut that the same way as I did on this. And uh, we'll see if we can get this into place. All right. All right, so just like this piece, we're gonna do an outside bend right here, bending along this line. And I did drop a paper template. I'll see if I can uh, at least make it available to you guys. It's right here. I don't know if it's gonna help you or not, but I'll try to make it available with, uh, I'll make some measurements and stuff like that. So, we'll first bend, we're gonna try to do this one. It's the hardest one because it, it's more than 45. Um, it kind of comes back like this, but uh, all right, let's get that going. All right, so I got it in the vise right along the line. It just might help if I add some heat. I did that yesterday. Right now it's pretty cold out here. And I'm just gonna heat it up for about a minute. Maybe, I'd, if I had that map gas, it probably would work better. And then I'm gonna bring out the big gun. All right. Now the uh, device that I have, it won't hold this whole piece, but uh, you know, it'll do, it'll do three quarters of it. All right, so I can only do half at a time. But I want a pretty good bend on here, at least as best as I can do. Just use whatever safety procedures you deem necessary. Don't have like cans of flammable stuff around your torch. Get it hot. Use a glove. Try not to knock over your torch. So right now, it needs to go all the way over to here. So once again, put it in the long ways and see what we can do. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it out and put it on the ground to, to get that extra angle. All right, so it's kind of coming. Yeah, let's see what it looks like. All right, so I got this piece cut. I'm gonna lay it up here, square it up a little bit. We'll take it over to the welding table in a little bit. Lay this in here, and I guess if I if I clamp it, you know, once I get these things welded on, I clamp it. That's a pretty good bend. So we've got this this angle here. We need to make one more bend coming in. We'll take a look at this one. Uh, this is the bend I'm talking about. That gives it its support. So we're going to make one more bend on that one coming in. We'll have to drill it, uh, just kind of wallow out this little area here, and then we'll mount up the motor. So right here, I have a mark. Yeah, I'm going to bend it right along here. It'll bend back towards here. We'll wallow it out, fit the motor in, so everything should be good. All right, so I know I'm not like Mr. Machine Guy, but I'm trying. So I've got this as I can see through it. The holes are gonna be at least at this line. So I just line up the top, line up the holes, kind of get it in position. And that way I can mark out like where the holes are gonna be. So drill th three holes, cut this out. All 
And it's getting kind of late, but I got everything lined up. It's going to kind of tack it in just a little bit. Squeeze it a little bit. Get it on there. All right, guys, we're going to take a couple looks at this. I've got the second motor. It's, it's mounted up. First motor's mounted up. So we can test um, the theory that I have that I'm going to have good clearance here. It's easy to move it. That would be full acceleration. This would be the, the normal ride heights for it. And that would be hard braking. Of course, there's a dog barking. There's a lot of dogs out here. So you just want to check to make sure you're not going to, that nothing's going to, uh, you're not going to have any problems. Looking pretty good. Um, and just this, this is really easy to manipulate. All right. So you just want to check your range of motion to make sure nothing's going to bang into each other. So I'm looking... Primarily, I'm looking right here. I did have to uh, cut this and bend it just because I, I didn't. It was very close to the motor, um, and I just want that extra clearance. I did that on the, the other side too. So something I want to do right now, before before you guys leave, I'm gonna take this off of this big big rack. I'm gonna put it next to the other other frame so you can see just how compact this design is. Let me get that done. Okay, I got it sitting here right next to the other rig and yeah this is definitely compact i mean the pedals are going to come here the end of the thing is right here so if you are in a small space consider building this type of rig it's like 48 inches long so there's the comparison to the v3 pedals i mean they're going to line right up with this thing monitor the seats are basically in the same position. This one looks like it's leaning back a little bit further, but that's the design of that seat. This is the biggest difference right here. Um, well, this one, the, the ends of the seats are about the same. Oh, look, butt kicker here, butt kicker there. So you gotta remind me to put one of those things on the front. Uh, I got to do it before I finish the front frame. But this other, the bit, the first rig I did, look at this. This is an extra, I think it's like 20, 27 inches, something like that. This one, yeah, there is, here we are, drone shot from above. Basically the same. And that's the way that's going to roll. So, hope you guys like it. And by the way, I just raced Monaco in that one. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a wicked race. See, it's a little bit wide in the front, but still, the footprint is still pretty darn small. The next thing I got to do, I'm going to take this top, the top frame off and we'll work, work on that the next episode. We've got to strengthen it up. I need to put an angle right here. I think I'm going to move this bar so it's coming straight down and put another angle up here. I bought a tubing notcher so that I can cut this conduit at an angle and it should just kind of slide around or whatever. Um, Never used that before either, but, I, but I'll try it in the next episode. What we want to do, or what I, I need to do now, take the motors off. I need to do a little bit of body work over uh, <clears throat> where I was welding and stuff like that. You know, kind of just make sure everything is either, either fully welded or at least tacked, uh, like, you know, in, in one inch increments or something like that. What I need to do is really work on the body work. So I'm gonna be putting a little bit of filler in where I need to and getting this thing into primer. So, and let that set for a, about a day or two. Temperature right now 
not that conducive for painting. It's 45 degrees outside, something like that, maybe 50, uh, that's Fahrenheit. I just wanna get this thing out of bare metal. Like I showed you in the beginning of the episode, I do have the bottom frame, it's all painted up. Um, so it should be fine. I just gotta get the mid frame into the same type of shape here, gloss black. Um, so we're gonna use some primer and then gloss black. For the next episode, we're gonna be working on the top frame and finalizing the length of these tie rod ends. All right guys, I'm gonna get this video wrapped up. Appreciate you joining me. And I'm looking forward to getting the mid frame mounted up on here with the traction loss and doing some work on this top frame. So join me next time. And I do, do wanna say thanks to everybody who has uh, thrown me a little bit of money for the super thanks thing. All right, guys, uh, check back next time. And I do appreciate you all joining me. Uh, Dave out.